First up, a scientist who wants to sell the sharks on the food of the future. My name is Sky. I'm 31 years old and I'm from Sydney. I never used to have a Barbie doll when I was a little kid. I always used to be out in the garden collecting bugs and getting really dirty. <laughs> I've always wanted to be an entomologist, which is a bug scientist. This is my giant burrowing cockroach. Her name's Woodstock and she's about 10 years old. She likes to eat eucalyptus leaves and I take her out to do educational shows. Some of the bugs actually live for quite a long time. So they have really, really interesting personalities. She actually likes to blow kisses and she likes to be pet as well, just like a cat or a dog would. The challenge for me definitely has been trying to get Australian consumers over that initial ick factor when it comes to bugs. They're very nutritious. I think they'll either love it or they'll hate it, so I'm prepared either way. Hello, Shark. My name is Sky and my company is called Edible Bug Shop. I'm asking for a $170,000 investment for a 20% equity in our company. Yes, that's right. I'm about to sell you on all these fantastic edible bugs. So for the past seven years, we've been breeding edible insects specifically for human consumption. We've developed a patent pending uh, insect flower as well, which is high in protein. It's low in fat, it's got lots of good micronutrients in it, like calcium and iron as well. And I'm sure you're thinking right now, why should I invest in edible insects? Yeah. Well, <laughs> by the year 2050, the world's population will grow to over 9 billion people. And traditional forms of livestock that we have at the moment just won't be enough to support this population. Edible insects are definitely the future of food and we aim to stamp ourselves as number one in the world in edible insect production. Now, I welcome any questions that you have and if you would like to try some bugs today, I definitely welcome that as well. I'd love to try some. What would you like to try? <laughs> I would say the cookie. A cookie? <laughs> it's a good starter because it's not too um, bug-like, yes. <laughs> What am I about to try? What is this? So this is a chocolate chip cookie, but we replace some of the flour with the insect flour. So it makes it high in protein, it's high in calcium and iron as well. I'll pass today, but yeah. I'll think about it. I might come up and grab one later if I get hungry. Mm. Not bad. Can you give us some comparisons, please? If I've got cricket flour or, or insect flour, yep, yep. and the nutritional benefit of that compared to regular flour, what is the benefits? Yep. So the, um, the insect flour is 65% protein. Um, it's got double the amount of calcium as milk, three times the amount of iron as spinach does. So it's kind of a superfood. How do you know? Have you done clinical trials? We've done, yeah, we have all the, all the um, NADO accreditation. The, 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 so. the carbohydrate content of that uh, flour? There's about uh, 5.6 grams per 100 grams. Is that all, really? Yeah. So, and can you make bread from it? So what sort of flour is it? So it's just basically we dry the crickets and we grind them up into a fine powder. So it doesn't replace regular flour, it's more of a supplement item. For instance, with the normal cookie recipe, you'd replace about a third of the regular flour with the insect flour. So, so what, what is the cost to produce a kilo of Bug flour. Um, so it costs us about six dollars per kilo. Wow. Okay. Um, and then we would sell that at the moment for about eighty dollars a kilo. Excuse me, eighty. Yeah. Eight zero dollars per yep. kilo. Oh, nice. It's a good margin. How do you think you can overcome what's going to be a natural resistance that people don't like the thought of eating bugs? It's hard for people because you don't necessarily think of a cow when you're eating a steak. It doesn't look the same. I definitely see the insect flower as the way of the future with insect eating. So you're getting all the nutritional benefits of eating the bugs without having to look at them. Four out of five sharks have tried that. I actually think you've got 80% market acceptance in some respects. I mean, that's one way to look at this. When I ride my Vespa, I eat a bug or two, believe me, on a Saturday morning, but <gasps> I'm just not a bug eating guy. And I think for that reason, I'm out. Well, I think you can't sell it unless you're willing to try it. So yeah. that's probably a right option. That's why I'm out. You got any vital statistics with respect to your sales? And yeah, whatnot? so our turnover for last year was 150,000. That was 60% profit, so 90,000. After all expenses are taken out of the business, you're keeping 90,000 bucks? Yeah. yeah. okay. Apart from the money, 
What are the other pieces that you think you're missing? I'm an entomologist and a food scientist. I've got a science brain. I kind of need someone to help me expand the business so that, you know, it's more appealing to a wider audience, not just scientists. And you want to work with this full time, 100%? Well, I work in my business full time at the moment. Is there anything in that process that is patentable, that is unique to you, that you can keep? Yeah, so we've got the, the bug flower is actually patent pending at the moment, so um, the patent will be pushed through on that soon. So competitors, who are your competitors in the Australian market? Um, or nobody. world market? Because people would be importing bug flower. No, um, you can't import edible insects into Australia because of our strict quarantine requirements. So there is no other competitor in this market but you? Yes tick a lot of the boxes for me in terms of what makes a fledgling business a big business, but where it leads me to is the valuation. Valuing the business at 850, I'm tempted, but I'm, I'm not tempted at your current valuation. I'm, uh, I think I'm, I'm at the point where I would make an investment, but I, I would want to bring your valuation down. I don't really think it's unrealistic to have a valuation like that considering, you know, the range of products that we have already established and the, the valuation of the patent as well, which is the main thing. I mean, it is very tempting. But I do think the valuation on your business is the, is the challenge. Um, I'm out. So Sky, I do see competition for you. So whilst there might not be somebody in the direct space, anything that is a protein enhancer that's, that's not this is actually competition to you. At this point, it's not an investment for me, so I'm out. The big issue here is the fact that it, it's, it's niche. It's still, this is not gonna be accepted in every household in Australia. I think you need to take a good hard look at your valuation. I'll, uh, I'll get out now, thank you, I'm done. So where are we? Janine? I will make you an offer. I will give you the 170,000, but I want half. So, 50%, 170,000. I do like that Janine has the expertise in the food area, which is obviously more beneficial to the business that we have at the moment. But I think 50% is a little bit much to give away, seen as all of the work that we've put into the business to start with. So, would you consider 30%? I wouldn't, know. Because the, the critical thing is you need people in the space, in retail, in food, and I truly think that where I've been in the last 14 years in this space, I do think that that is actually a very fair valuation for where it is and what we can also add. Yes, there's no question that you've put your blood, sweat and tears in this and this is your baby, and I, and I don't want to diminish that in any way, shape or form. And I do think that, you know, I do, th I do honestly also think it's high risk for me because I think it might be just that tweak too early, even though your sales are saying it's, it's sort of coming. I love the protection. I think you're a very intelligent woman. And so I think we could work really well together. But I think for us to, to really drive it, I do think I need to be an equal partner. Congratulations. Just think about the other 50% being worth millions of dollars. Don't worry about the value. <laughs> That's, right. That's well, what you've got to think be. about. It will be. Okay. It will be. Well <laughs> Thank done. You. I was really considering whether giving 50% away was the right thing to do. And I think um, we've come away with a good partner. She has a quality that's very rare, I think, which is that she's very smart, she's done a great job, but she's still prepared to learn. She's she fine. will listen and she will be coached. And that's great. 